Krishna Pristaya Bhutale, Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namane, Namaste Sarasati Devi, Goravani Pracharine, 
nirvishesha shunyavadi paschacha de satarine. Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya. Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya. Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya. So today being the auspicious day of the Tirubhav Mahotsava for Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur and also Gadarhar Pandit, we will speak about the pastimes of these two great personalities. First of all, we will speak about Gadarhar Pandit. So Srila Gadarhar Pandit appeared in Mayapur Dam there. We <laughs> see his residence there in Mayapur, just near to the Yoga Peak, where Jagannath Mishra and Sachi Mata lived, and where Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu invented himself in this world more than 500 years ago. Sri Srila Gad Gadarhar Pandit grew up along with Nimai Pandit. But Nimai Pandit in his childhood, or rather in his youth, he was displaying pastimes of scholarship. Gadarhar was already devoted, but Nimai Pandit was playing the part of a scholar and he was teaching logic and he had opened his school and of course he'd met with Keshava Kashmiri, like that. And he, Nimai Pandit would make a point of finding the devotees, meeting with the devotees, and then arguing with them. And he would make some presentation based on grammar, and then he would ask them, you know, to defeat it. And then when the devotees couldn't do it, then Nimai Pandit would defeat it. And so many times Nimai Pandit would just meet with the devotees and he would just confront them and argue with them. And the de it got to the point that the, the devotees wanted to avoid even meeting Nimai Pandit. So Gadarhar was like that. Gadarhar was one of the devotees and he was with the devotees and they were always thinking if Nimai, if that boy Nimai would only become a devotee, it would be very wonderful. And of course it happened that Nimai Pandit went to Gaya and he took initiation from Ishvara Puri and then after taking initiation he came back through Kanai Natsala and in Kanai Natsala he had uh, a very uh, esoteric experience where Radha and Krishna appeared to him and he, Krishna actually embraced Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Kanaina Sala, Kanaina Sala is a place, it's a, Krishna comes here to dance there. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu actually experienced, he actually met Krishna there in Kanaina Sala. Do we want to have translation? It's okay? Yeah? Okay. Everybody else is okay with English, is it? Yeah, ladies, you need translation? No? You're okay? Yeah? All right. Because translation going on over here, if you want. All right, we'll continue. So, Gadarhar. was when, when uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came back from Kanai Natsala, then they had, they had the devotee, uh, one devotee had seen the transformations which had taken place in Nimai Pandit and how he'd become a great devotee. So they were all astonished and it was arranged they would all meet at the home of Suklambar Brahmachari and they met together and Nimai Pandit came 
And then it happened that one Brahmana was reciting some verse from Bhagavatam and Nimai Pandit, his bhava awakened and the, all the devotees could witness the, ex, the, the, ex, the extent of the love of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the bhava and the prema which he was experiencing, hearing the glories of Lord Krishna. So Gadarhar Pandit was very, very attached to Nimai Pandit and they were in the same school, they'd studied together and Gadarhar always liked to be with Nimai Pandit. He wanted to always be with him. And it happened that one day Nimai Pandit, in his feeling of separation from Krishna, he approached Gadarhar and he asked him, Where is Krishna? Where is Krishna? And Gadarhar replied, It's all right, he's in your heart. He's in your heart. But when Nimai Pandit heard Gadarhar say that Lord Krishna was in his heart, then Nimai took his hands and he began to try to rip open his chest. And he wanted to actually tear open his heart to find Krishna. And Mother Sachi had witnessed this and she had seen how Gadarhar reacted to this. And Gadarhar, seeing Nimai Pandit try to rip open his own heart, he restrained him and he told Nimai Pandit, he said, don't worry, the Lord is coming very soon. Just be calm, just be patient. Just now, Lord Krishna will come. So Mother Sachi very much appreciated how Gadarhar had restrained her son from doing any serious harm or injuring to, to his own body. And afterwards she, she came to Gadarhar Pandit and she thanked him and she said to him that you please Please stay with my son. Wherever he goes, you please stay with him and help him and guide him and protect him. So it did happen like that, of course. Later on, Nimai Pandit was to take sannyas. And at that time, when he took sannyas, then Gadarhar also went with him. But before that, you will have the meeting of Gadarhar Pandit with Pundari Vijanidi. Nimai Pandit had told all the devotees that a great devotee is coming. You should all go to meet Pundari. He's a wonderful devotee. So Gadarhar was anxious to go and meet Pundarik Vijanidi. He thought, a great devotee, a great Vaishnava is coming. I have to go and hear, get his blessings. But when Gadarhar came to meet Pundarik Vijanidi, he was surprised to see how Pundarik Vijanidi was sitting, how he was dressed and his attire, because Gadarhar was a brahmachari and he was a very austere brahmachari, very renounced, you know. He wore very simple cloth and he didn't eat a lot of opulent food. He very carefully controlled his senses. So he was a really strict brahmachari. And he came and he saw Pundarik Vijanidi. Now Pundarik Vijanidi was a, he was a, a landholder. He had a big estate. And he was dressed in opulent clothes. And he had, you know, rings. You know how Bengali people, they often put a ring on every finger, you know. And then they have these, he had some necklaces also different jewelry on him, you know, and dressed also fine cloth, lace and silk. And his hair was also 
you know, he wasn't shaven headed or anything, you know. He had some nice hair, well groomed and everything. And then on his table where he was sitting, he had sherbet and different refreshments and then there was numpkins and sweets so many things all there you know and so he was sitting there and then somebody else was his servant was at the side with the peacock fan and fanning him and Gadarha was watching and he's thinking he's a great Brahma he's a great Vaishnava what kind of devotee is this and Gadarha was thinking like that within his mind. So it was actually Makunda who had told Gadarha to come and see Pundarik Vijaniri. It was Makunda, and Makunda had come along with him. And Makunda understood how Pundarik Vijaniri would behave like this. Pundarik Vijaniri, he liked to put on this show, you could call it a facade, appearing like a materialistic person. And that way nobody would honor him as being a great devotee. He didn't want any kind of honor or respect for himself. And so, you know, of course we wear saffron cloth and like and we carry a danda and all the you know, just people will res give you respect. But Pundarik Vijanini, he didn't want that. He just wanted to look like a... The other way, he wanted to put, present himself as being a big materialist. And Gadarha thought, well, he's a materialist, he's a Vishai. What, what can I hear from this person? But then Makunda is there, and Makunda could understand the mind of Gadarhar. So Makunda began to recite that very nice verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam. Aho bhakiyam stanat kala kutam jagam chaya payanad api asadvi labe gatim datriyuchitam tananyam of course, Makunda could sing it very beautifully, not like me, you know. <laughs> I'm a Westerner, I cannot recite these verses properly. But it's a very beautiful verse, and the meaning, of course, is very special because it describes who could be more merciful than Lord Krishna because he accepted Putana, who had come there looking or pretending to be his nurse, and she'd put poison on her nipple with the intention to kill this child. So Lord Krishna accepts her to be his nurse, and he liberated her to the spiritual world. So this was the, the great mercy of Lord Krishna. So Makunda recited this verse and Pundarik Vijanidi heard it and immediately, you know, it hit him and the bhava which is within him awakened and he fell off his seat and he rolled on the floor and he shed tears and the tears were so great the whole room became flooded with water from the tears coming from his eyes. And he was rolling on the ground for a long time. So Gadahar watched and Gadahar was shocked. He was amazed. Wow, who is this person that he has so much love for Krishna? So Gadarha watched and he understood that this Pundarik Vijanidi, that he is really a great devotee. Although he's appearing like a materialist, he is actually a great devotee. Very instructive to all of us that 
we should understand the importance of not recognizing a person as being a great devotee just by their attire or just by their external appearance. Who is actually the great devotee? And just as we don't recognize a devotee by their external appearance, we shouldn't recognize a, an ordinary person as being a materialist just by his dress. We have to hear, we have to see what are their actions, what are their activities, what do they say. Prabhupada talks especially about the importance of hearing. He said the person may be fool number one, but he may be dressed very nicely like a gentleman. Of course, Prabhupada traveled extensively and he traveled in the different airports and he'd seen all of these different businessmen. You know how they dress, they look maybe look very nicely in their suits and they have their briefcase and so on. But Prabhupada could hear them talk and he could hear what they talk about also. And he could understand what is their actual nature. So, important thing is to not judge a person by their external features, but we have to see, we have to hear what are their activities. So, Pundarik Vijaniri showed his great love for Krishna. He revealed it unexpectedly. And Gadarhar felt very guilty that he must have committed a, an offense against such a great devotee. And to offend a great devotee, it can be on different levels. Sometimes we ex can be, offense can be mental, or it could be verbal, or it may be corporal or physical. Just like when Bhrigu Muni went to Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva, he offended Lord Shiva verbally. He has offended uh, Lord Brahma mentally and he offended Vishnu physically. And so Pundarik Vijanini, uh, Gadaha felt himself to be very offensive to Pundarik Vijanini and knowing him to be a great devotee, he considered it to be very bad for his spiritual life. So he thought how, I, how he could repent for this, how he could make up for this offense. And he thought to himself, and he thought that I should take initiation from this person. So Gadarhar went to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Nimai Pandit, and he told Nimai, he said, you know, I would like to take initiation from Pundari Vijaniri. And Lord Chaitanya said, very good, very nice, go, do it. So on the auspicious day, Pundarik Vijaniri agreed and he accepted Gadarhar Pandit as his disciple. Pundarik Vijaniri himself had been initiated by Madhavendra Puri. So Pundarik Vijaniri actually is like a god brother of Advaita Acharya. So in this way, Gadarhar got his initiation. And then there's another pastime at one point that Gadarhar somehow he had he wanted to get his man to hear his mantra again. At the time of an initiation, the guru gave a mantra to him, and he wanted somehow he'd given that mantra to some unqualified person, and he can, he wanted to hear the mantra again from his guru. No, he wanted to hear the mantra again, so he asked Lord Chaitanya, he asked Nimai Pandit, could you give me the mantra? And Lord Chaitanya said, no, no, I'm not your guru. You have to get the mantra from your guru. But he said, my guru is not here. How can I do it? Lord Chaitanya said, you wait, he's coming soon. Nimai Pandit, of course, is omniscient and he knew. And so after some time, 
Pundari Vijaniri came. And in this way, Gadarha came, came again to Pundari Vijaniri and requested him, could you please reinitiate me, give me my mantra again? Because somehow I've, I've forgotten it. I, he said, I must have given my mantra to unqualified people, so I want to receive the mantra from you again. And in this way, Pundari Vijaniri reinitiated him and gave him the mantra again. So then I said, Lord Chaitanya takes sannyas and Gadarha goes with him. Gadarha also wants to go. He follows him all the way to Jagannath Puri. And Gadarha was staying there in Jagannath Puri with Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, Lord Chaitanya, that is said, Lord Chaitanya discovered the deity of Gopina. Lord Chaitanya discovered the deity of Gopina somehow, maybe in the sands at Puri, he uncovered the deity of Gopina. And he gave that deity to Gadarhar Pandit. And he requested Gadarhar Pandit, you worship this deity of Gopina. And so Gadarhar Pandit would regularly worship the deity, Tota. We say Tota Gopinath. Tota meaning the garden. There are gardens around there, in, in that part, in that section of Puri. So Tota Gopinath. Gopinath who's in the garden. And Gadarhar was worshipping there. But Gadarhar was getting old. And it said it was difficult for him to put all the... the uh, crowns on and the different uh, attachments which go on the crown, the different attire to decorate the crown of the Lord. It was becoming difficult for him and the Lord understood that and it said at that time Gopinath sat down. So the deity of Gopinath is sitting. It's very unusual to see the deity of Lord Krishna sitting like that. But they said this is how Gopinath reciprocated with his devotee, Gadarhar, that he actually sat down to make it easier for Gadarhar Pandit to fix the crowns on the Lord. So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he was in Puri, he would regularly come to Gadarhar Pandit and he would want to hear Srimad Bhagavatam. Gadarhar would recite to him, especially Chaitanya Mahaprabhu liked to hear the pastimes of Dhruva Maharaj and Prahlad Maharaj. And it was Gadarhar who would read them to him. And Gadarha would read, you know, those days there were no printed books. Everything was on palm leaves. And Gadarha was reading. But when he would read, he would also feel ecstasy. And tears would come from his eyes. And it would cause the smudging of the ink. And so it happened after some time uh, it was... Uh, And Srinivas Acharya came there. He, he had received a blessing from Mother Sachi that you can go to Puri and Gadahar is there, he will teach you Srimad Bhagavatam. But when Srinivas came there, Gadahar said, Well, I would teach you, but I'm not able to read anymore my Srimad Bhagavatam because my tears have smudged the ink. So Srinivas said, then I will go to Navadvip and I will get another, I will get somebody to copy Srimad Bhagavatam, I will bring it back. So Srinivas went all the way back to Navadvip and he got someone to write out again Srimad Bhagavatam on palm leaves. And uh, he brought it back and when he came back, Gadahar Pandit had already disappeared. So Srinivas came there to Puri and he was 
when he heard Gadara had already left the world, he was heartbroken. But then he got a message. Gadara Pandit had told him that he, he said that when Srinivas comes, tell him to go to Vrindavan and to take shelter of Jiva Goswami. And Jiva Goswami will teach him Srimad Bhagavatam. So this was Gadarhar Pandit. Gadarhar Pandit, he took a vow of Shitra Sanyas. Shitra Sanyas means he should never leave the holy place, that he would remain there in the holy place. And Bhaktivinoda Thakur considers that type of sanyas to be very appropriate for the Kali Yuga. Because we see in the Kali Yuga, difficult for people to keep the vow of sannyas. Different, but Bhaktivinoda Thakur said, easier for them to stay in the holy place. And even they can have their wife with them, just like Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya. He was like a Shetra sannyasi. He was living there in Puri with his wife, but he was like a sannyasi. So that he, he was he, like Shetra sannyasi. So Gadarhar, he was the brahmachari, of course. He took also Shetra sannyas, and he had also the Gopinath deity. But it happened that Lord Chaitanya decided he wanted to go to Vrindavan or to South India and Gadarhar wanted to go with him. But Lord Chaitanya said, no, 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 you cannot come. But Gadarhar was so attached to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he said, no, I have to come with you, I have to fall. Lord Chaitanya, no, no, no. You have taken the vow, Shetra Sanyas, and you have to worship Gopinath. How can you give up these vows? And it's mentioned, Lord Chaitanya was very concerned that devotees would not be whimsical in their devotional service. He liked to see them very steady and to maintain their service. Just like here in Calcutta, you have devotees, some wonderful brahmacharis who have been serving here for many, many years, right? We won't embarrass them or make them feel uncomfortable by mentioning their names. But you know, there are devotees here who have been serving the deities more than 20 years and they just stay here and they're they just absorbed in their service. Lord Chaitanya appreciated that mood. And when Gadarhar wanted to follow him, Lord Chaitanya didn't want. But Gadarhar said, no, I'm not, I'm not following you. I'm just going on my own. And Lord Chaitanya would walk and Gadarhar would be behind. Lord Chaitanya would feel very uncomfortable. And he chastised Gadarhar. He said, you've broken your vow. You've given up your vow, Shetra Sanyas. You've given up the worship of Gopinath. This is not good. Gadarhar said, I didn't give up my vow. He said, I'm following your lotus feet. Wherever your lotus feet go, that is a holy place. So I'm always in the holy place because I'm always seeing your lotus feet. Lord Chaitanya said, you go back to Puri and continue to worship Gopina. So in this way, Lord Chaitanya chastised Gadarhar. And then Lord Chaitanya got in a boat, crossed the Ganga, and Gadarhar fainted and just collapsed. Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya was with him and he revived him and consoled him and told him, this is the way of the Lord. You don't lament. So, Gadarhar, it is said he is an uh, expansion of Srimati Radharani, that he is like the internal potency of the Lord. 
and he shows that mood, that deep attachment to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, just as Srimati Radharani was so deeply attached to Krishna, so Gadarhar Pandit was so deeply attached to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And then when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu left the world, Gadarhar also, he could not remain. It was unbearable for him to be in the world without Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And within less than one year, Gadarhar Pandit also finished his pastimes and disappeared from this world. So he had many disciples, and his disciples, they continued to worship Tota Gopinath. There's a line, disciplic succession, coming through Kedarhar Pandit, and great devotees are there, and they continue the worship. All right, so this is Gadarhar Pandit. Now, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, on the same day, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, of course, many hun a few hundred, three hundred years or more later than the departure of Gadarhar, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur also left this world. And Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur departed from the world also in Jagannath Puri. So we offer our respects to Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Namo Bhaktivinodaya Satchitananda Namine Gora Shakti Swarupaya Rupanuga Varayate. Right? The qualifications of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur that he is Gora Shakti. He's, he's got the energy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He must have had that Gora Shakti, otherwise how else could he have spread the Sankirtan movement? It was Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur who reju rejuvenated the teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and brought them back to the standards which had actually been initiated by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. After the departure of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, things had degraded. There had been declines and there were different Sahaja groups had become prominent. And you have the Kasko Swamis and different, so many different things, different Sahaja groups. And it was Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur who set about re-establishing the actual mood of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the spirit of the Gaudiya Vaishnav line. It was Bhaktivinoda Thakur who labored intensely to bring about this rejuvenation of Krishna consciousness. He not only chastised all the deviant philosophers, all the people who were going off and who were preaching wrong things. But he, he wrote voluminous literature describing the teachings of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. We note in the year 1896, he had written a, a book called Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, His Life and Precepts. And he had sent this book to a number of universities in the Western world. Particularly, he had sent to McGill University in Canada. And the devotees went there, they went to the library in the 1960s, and they found the book. They actually saw, found the book, it's still there in the library, which he had sent. Right? So that's like 1890, more, 100, 100, more than 100 years ago, books are still there. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur wrote very many literatures and commentary. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur had to, with great difficulty only, he could find a copy of Chaitanya Charitamrita. There was no copies of Chaitanya Charitamrita anywhere. 
how to get a copy. It was only by great mercy that he was able to locate a copy of Chaitanya Charitamrita and have it copied. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, of course, has also given us so many wonderful songs which we enjoy singing. Like he wrote a book of songs called Sharanagati. And in that book of Sharanagati, he goes through the six different symptoms the six different kinds of surrender. You may know there are six items of surrender. The Anuku uh, Yasya Sankalpa, Pratiko Yasya Varjanam, like that, accepting everything favorable for devotional service, giving up everything unfavorable for devotional service, knowing that only Krishna can protect us, knowing that only Krishna is maintaining us, having no desire separate from the desire of Krishna, and always being meek and humble. So on each of those six items, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur wrote a number of songs. And we sing songs like Shuddha Bhakata, right? Shuddha Bhakata Charanarinu Bhajana Anu, this song, Describing all the items favorable for devotional service. Visiting the holy places of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Observing the holy days like Ekadasi and Janmastami. All of these different items are all mentioned in the song by Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. In a wonderful poetic manner. And then he's given us also wonderful songs of the different names of Lord Krishna. We enjoy singing like Sri Nam Kirtan, Yashomati Nandana Brajaparanakara. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur penned. And then also Vipavari Shesha Loka Provesha. Morning songs, Odila Aruna Pura Babage, Jiva Mani All of these songs are all Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. He gave us so much and he labored to write these. Not easy. How much you'd have to think, labor. You know, sometimes we think, oh, so easy, you just write it, you know. But it takes so much effort, so much intense absorption to think, to meditate, to get the different names right, the, the rhyme, the meters, everything. It all has to be, and he did it so wonderfully. Of course, he was a highly educated man. He was a very great personality, so great that you know, he became the chief magistrate in Jagannath Puri and he was in charge of the Puri temple. And when he was in charge of the Puri temple, he set about removing all the corruption. He wouldn't let people uh, cheat and take bribes and so on. He was very strict. He was very careful to do everything very nicely for the pleasure of Lord Krishna. But his real mission was preaching the message of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he got a transfer from Jagannath Puri and he came back over to Bengal and he was in Navadweep, resided Navadweep and then later on to Swarup Ganj. And in Swarup Ganj he has his residence there, Surabi Kunj is there. And also then his own residence, uh, what's it called, Suki, Saki, and, and I can't remember the name, Bengali language. Yes, somebody knows. Anyway, he made his residence there in Swarup Ganj, and it was there that he saw over in Mayapur, he could see some effulgence light coming there, and he was puzzled, what is actually there? And he went over to investigate the area, and he found many Tulsis growing there. And then he was checking different maps and so on, and he decided that this could be the actual place 
of the appearance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu because before Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur appeared, people were thinking the birthplace of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was over in Navadweep. But Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur understood it couldn't be in Navadweep because according to the descriptions in Chaitanya Bhagwat and in Chaitanya Charitamrita, the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes are over near to the Chankazi Samadhi. The Chankazi Samadhi was very important. That's a historical place. And, you know, you, they didn't move the Chankazi Samadhi. There was no doubt about where the Chankazi Samadhi was. Everybody knew where that was. And Lord Chaitanya, he had gone to the Chankazi's house. So they'd gone there from, they'd marched there from Lord Chaitanya's, from the yoga peak. And so with evidence like this, Bhaktivinoda Thakur understood that this could be the actual place where Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared. And then when they did some excavation, then they found a deity. They found a deity of, was it Kurma deity was there in the yoga peak? Jagannath Mishra's family deity. They found these kind of relics in the ground there. And so Bhaktivinoda Thakur then began to establish a temple at the birth. And of course before that, he brought Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj there and he asked Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj, can you confirm, is this a place? And Jagannath Das Babaji was over a hundred years old at this time and he was carried there. But when he came there, then he danced and jumped in the air and he told Bhaktivinoda Thakur, yes, this is the place of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's appearance. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur then set about constructing a temple there. And he wrote articles and he, he told people, he said, in order to build this ten center, this temple here, I'm willing to go to every gentleman in Calcutta and beg one rupee. Of course, one rupee was quite a bit in those days. <laughs> but still, he said, I'm going to beg one rupee from every gentleman in order to construct this temple, the yoga peak. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur established the yoga peak there. And he wrote also Navadvip Mahatmya, describing the glories of Navadvip Dham and all the different pastimes which take place around the Dham and describes about all the different leelas and the different islands and what each island represents. It's all due to Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. He, and so Prabhupada describes him, the pioneer of spreading Krishna consciousness in the Western world. He rejuvenated it here in Bengal and he pioneered it in the Western world because nobody had brought Krishna, nobody had even thought about bringing Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission to the West. But Bhaktivinoda Thakur did. And Bhaktivinoda Thakur had the vision that in the future, people from all the different nations will come and they will gather together, the Africans and the Russians and the Americans and the Chinese, they will all come together to chant the holy names of Gauranga. <laughs> so Chaitanya, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had predicted Prithiviti Achiyat Nagaradigram and Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur had full faith that this is going to happen, that one day it's going to happen. Although Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur's physical presence, it was not really possible, but after his departure, it was realized. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, we said, 1896. He was preaching in those times, more than a hundred years ago. So at those times, it was a very different 
society, different world in which he was living in. The world of India was much more agriculturally based. You know, you come to Calcutta today and you see so many big factories and oh, this is Amazon here and <laughs> this logistics here and so many things are there, you know. They were not there in Bhaktivinoda Thakur's time. In the time of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, it was rice fields, you know. People were growing, cultivating the land. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur was going village to village. He understood that how to preach. Go to the village, go from one village to the other. And he would call the villagers, make a program. They'd do kirtan, people would gather, and then he would preach. And after he would give a class, a lecture to them, then they would have some prasada, and they would distribute prasada. Just as we are doing, this is a program. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur had set up like this. He was going village to village. Later on, it was his seminal son, Srila Om Vishnupad Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur Prabhupada, who established the Gaudiya Mat in a different mood from Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur because times were changing and there was more urbanization. People were coming more to Calcutta and there were cities being developed. So it was Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati who was coming to the towns and cities rather than just in the villages. He was focusing more on the the population because he saw the mass of people move from the, the countryside into the cities. And then, of course, after Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada, then we have our own founder, Acharya Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada, who comes and he takes the message of Lord Chaitanya around the globe, not just in India, not just to Burma or Nepal, but around the whole world. And in this way, fulfill the desire of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he departed from this world in Jagannath Puri. And he, he had a large family, of course, Bhaktivinoda Thakur. He had like 12 children. And he trained them all to be devotees. Not only Bhimal Prasad, who became Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Thakur. But he trained all of his children to be devotees. Some time ago, I remember in Prabhupada's time, in Prabhupada's time when Srila Prabhupada was here, one of our devotees from the West had come and somehow he went and he found out one of the sons of Bhaktivinoda Thakur. One of the sons was still living at that time and he went and he brought him here to meet Srila Prabhupada. And Srila Prabhupada was very happy to meet him. And there was also Lalit Prasad. Lalit Prasad was another son of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. He was the youngest son, I think. So Prabhupada also met with him. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, however, he retired to Jagannath Puri in his old age. It was difficult for him. But he would tell his servant, put me on a horse and take me for preaching. That was his mood. Even though he could not walk, he said, just get a horse, put me on the horse and we'll go for preaching. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur had that kind of mood that he wanted to preach so much. And he did so much preaching in his time. And he gave us so much inspiration for preaching. He taught, tells us how to do this Namhata, 
how to organize this marketplace of the holy name. He has given us so much mercy. And this is the day when he concluded his, etern his pastimes here in this world to return to his eternal lila. So we are praying to Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur as well as Gadarhar Pandit and all the Acharyas that we want to continue this Krishna consciousness movement more and more to, 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 to distribute to every corner of the globe and to give everyone the opportunity to hear the holy name of Lord Goranga and to taste the food offered to the Lord and to let them know also about wonderful personalities like Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. All right, so any questions? Yes, Prabhu? Any comments or questions? Maybe some... Yes, Prabhu? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, it's a very technical expression, you know. What does it mean to be a, an, an incarnation of the effulgence of Srimati Radharani? Mm. I don't I don't know. How where was that described? Oh in one lecture. Oh, okay. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't heard it myself, but it could be. Huh? Oh, Das. Oh, Gadarha Das. Oh, really? Ah, uh -huh. well, that's a different personality. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, one way it, we could understand it is that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself would come to Gadarhar Pandit to associate in order to learn more the bhava of Srimati Radharani. Understanding Gadarhar's identity, you know, we, as we say, you know, the, the Goragana Neshtipika says also Pundarik Vijanidi is Maharaj Vrishabhanu. And so Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would associate with Gadarhar appreciating that he can learn more the mood of Srimati Radharani to cultivate that Radha bhava from his personality. That's one way to understand it. One more thing. Uh, we heard that Bhaktivinoda left this world in Kolkata. He left it where? Kolkata. Kolkata? Yes. Oh, really? Oh, I've heard it differently. I don't. Somehow, anyway, they made a samadhi in Swarup Ganj. Samadhi is there. There are different. We get. I don't know different opinions about these things. You don't know what. What's authorized and <laughs> what's the actual facts? Maybe some of the scholars know better. Some of our academic scholars. There's that one devotee who is a professor in college in America, and his focus is on the life of Bhaktivinoda Thakur. So he would 
probably know more accurately these details. Uh, but uh, where is the samadhi of Gadarhar Pandit? Well, I don't know offhand immediately. There, there. Uh, sometimes they they make samadhis in different places. They make a, like. Just like we have a Smriti Samadhi for Jayananda Prabhu in Jagannath Mandir in Rajpur. They have a, what's called a Smriti, and we have also Prabhupada's Pushpa Samadhi in Mayapur. And so Gadara Pandit, what happened? I, I don't know where his Samadhi is, where, where it would be. I don't know how he disappeared from the world. But he would disappear in Jagannath Puri. I don't know the details. Must be somewhere there in Puri. If they made the samadhi at all. Hmm. Some, you know, for great personalities, generally, you know, we, we don't like to speak about their disappearance. That it's, it's too painful talk much about their disappearance and what happened to them. You, you see in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, it doesn't describe anything. There's nothing there about the disappearance of... Only a little bit maybe uh, Madhavendra Puri and how he was served by Ishwara Puri. That's there. But Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, you know, the, 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 in the biography which I read, it told that he'd gone to Jagannath Puri, and he was there in Jagannath Puri. He's living there. I never heard that he departed in Calcutta. That's something I'm hearing for the first time. I don't know. Of course, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, he departed in Calcutta. And then they brought his divine body out to Mayapur after he departed. But Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, because that was a long time ago, well, when 1896, he wrote, what, what, what was the year of his departure? Anybody know? It must have, oh, it's about 1913 or, because it was about the same time, a, a year later, Gorky Shodas Babaji also departed. Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati lost both his spiritual father and his seminal father within a short time. I think it was first Gorkishar Das Babaji departed and then later on, in Bhakt, I'm not sure. But it was about 1913, 1911, about that time when he departed. So Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati, he spent 20 years, he departed 1936. So there's about 25, 20, 25 years he was preaching without Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur there. But Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur had trained him so much for preaching, giving them so much education. At one point, there was that one, Radha Charandas Babaji was talking, he was propagating his uh, bogus mantra. He had this bogus mantra and it was becoming popular. And people were chanting it and they were thinking this is very good and everything. 
And it was Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur who pointed out that this is not a mantra, that this is not a proper mantra, that this is what you're chanting is not good. And they tried to stop the Radha Charandas Babaji from propagating his thing. But it was becoming popular and so he stopped listening to Bhakti. He, initially the Radha Charandas Babaji was coming to hear from Bhaktivinoda Thakur. But then Bhaktivinoda Thakur, when, when he took Bhaktivinoda Thakur, told him your mantra is bogus, it's not right, then he stopped coming because he, he had so many followers of his own. So he was attached to having his own followers. He didn't want to change any. And Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati, he was preaching, he was young and he was pre very passionate. You know, when you're young, you get really fired up and passionate and he was quite aggressive and he was really attacking, you know. And, and people would get really upset because Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati, he would speak so strongly to people. As Prabhupada told us, he was Nishinga Guru, you know, he was real Nishinga Guru. You know, he, would, he would preach very, very strongly, denounce anything which was a deviation from the actual path. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur would sometimes have to send Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati, you go to Mayapur. <laughs> and in Mayapur in those days, it was really quiet, you know. It was, there was nothing, just that the one temple which they had built. And Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati would be sent there to sit there and chant there and <laughs> do bhajan. And <laughs> so Bhaktivinoda Thakur would do things like that, you know, just to, to, to calm the situation because it this uh, this Babaji, this bogus Babaji with his mantra, he had followers and it was making difficulty, there was some conflict and Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati was preaching strongly. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur wanted to keep it calm. He didn't want anything to get, you know, too upset. So he told Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati, better you just go to Mayapur, You'll be in Mayapur. So you can understand something of the mood of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, what very compassionate, magnanimous personality he was, and how he utilized every moment of his time for the service of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Whether he departed here or there, not very important. But we all know for sure that his destination was back home, back to Godhead. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur Ki Jai. Srila Gadarhar Pandit Ki Jai. Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada Ki Jai. Gopri Manande.